Well, the race season is looming, so you know what that means? Open water swimming. Yeah, and if you spent all winter training in a pool and now you've got a triathlon coming up in a sea or a lake, you're gonna need to dial in some specific open water skills. Yeah, but don't worry if it's currently too cold where you are or you can't access the open water because you're in luck. These skills can also be trained in the comfort of a heated swimming pool. Everyone has different aspects of open water swimming that they find challenging, but if you've not done it for a while, it's wise to brush up on all the aspects. Now the most intimidating thing for open water swimming for most people is the sheer number of people in the water with them. We spend most of our time going out of our way to find a nice quiet swimming pool lane to do our sessions in. But it's time to mix it up a little bit and get some feel for the hecticness of sharing water space with other swimmers. Well, this is where you're going to need to find some willing volunteers or fellow triathletes who will hopefully benefit too. So rather than setting off your ordinary five to 10 second gap in the pool or finding that nice quiet lane, instead, I want you to set off one behind one another, right on one another's feet. Essentially getting used to that close proximity swimming. Now initially just start off swimming at a nice steady pace and getting used to just being in close proximity to one another. And then you can build the pace up and even start to flank and kind of go on the side of one another. And then with that, if you do have a pool booking or you're swimming in a squad, see if you can actually remove one or two of the lane ropes so that you can actually all set off alongside one another and really, again, building on that, that close proximity swimming. Now, in reality, during a race, obviously within one or two minutes of starting, actually all the athletes sort of disperse and you have your own space. So if you can get used to swimming numerous lengths on the go in close proximity to other people, you're gonna be winning. While having other swimmers in the lane with you can obviously make swimming harder, it can also make swimming easier. It's time to look at drafting. You have two options on this. You can either draft on someone's hips or you can draft on their feet. So let's start by looking at drafting on their feet. This is the easiest to practice because no one really needs to change their pace. You, all you need is for one swimmer to swim at a comfortable, steady pace and the second swimmer to slot into their feet behind them. Basically, you wanna be as close as possible to get the biggest draft possible but also not touching their feet constantly because that's going to be pretty annoying for the swimmer in front of them. But if you have the ability to change pace, why not try drafting at different speeds? Now, you kind of have two main options here. You can either draft off someone of a similar speed to yourself and therefore saving yourself a lot of energy, but not necessarily going any faster. Or you can put a little surge in and draft off someone who is faster than you, but for the same effort. Now, in terms of the actual drafting formats, you kind of have, again, a couple of options here. You can draft off the hips, or you can draft off the feet. Now, in short, if you're drafting off the hips, you're making it easier for yourself if done correctly, but it may affect that lead swimmer a little bit. They may feel a bit of drag. Whereas drafting off the feet, whilst maybe not quite as effective, you won't be affecting that lead swimmer. This is quite a big topic in itself. So we actually have a video already on the channel called Drafting on the Hips versus Feet. Check that out for a little bit more detail on how to go about doing it. You can also practice drafting drills during a session. Simply all push off in rapid succession so you're really close to each other's feet and the lead swimmer stops at the wall, hangs on the side while everyone else turns and then pushes off to be on the last swimmer's feet again. This is a great way to practice your drafting. Also, you can practice your turns in a pool even if you've only got one lane to work with with lane ropes on either side. Simply do no wall turns. This is turning around the T essentially as an imaginary boy. So before you get to the wall, you do a kind of really sharp turn like you would in a race. And again, this is something to practice with other swimmers in your lane too, because that's really close to that real world, world scenario where you're all turning at once. Now, sighting is another key open water skill. Without it, well, you'll find yourself either going off course or perhaps swimming a lot further than you had intended. The beauty is you can also practice that in a swimming pool too. Yeah, just popping up and sighting as and when you like during a workout is absolutely fine. Personally, I would just sight the dive block every so often, but if you are lucky enough to have a coach on the pool deck, you can get them to move an object such as a kickboard or a cone around so that you're having to pop up and find out where that object is. 
And obviously, you're not going to have waves to overcome in a swimming pool like you would in the open water. But in a way, that's actually quite a good thing. It means that you can really perfect that sighting technique, making sure that you're sighting the right point and only just lifting your head out of the water. So just your eyes are coming out rather than the full head. And then when you do jump back into the open water, you've got that technique dialed in and obviously making sure that you're not lifting your head too high. The start of a triathlon can be quite intimidating, especially if it's open water and a deep water start and a mass start with people all around you. But a deep water start is something you can actually practice in the pool. Simply push away from the wall, make sure you can't reach the lane rope or the wall and tread water for a while. And then at an imaginary gun, start swimming. What you need to do is tread water or scale water and hold yourself preferably in a horizontal position waiting for that go. You can even have a coach on the deck who says go and then a few strong, strong strokes all the way to the other wall. Also try to practice this with other swimmers around you and don't be too polite. If you can get your mates to all be next to you all waiting for that gun with a bit of jostling and physical contact, you'll be far less phased by this when it happens in real life in your race. A deep water start requires a few strong strokes to get you started from a static position and also to break out and find some clear water from the masses. With this in mind, it's a good idea to practice some pace changes in the pool. Pick random points along the lane rope or on the pool side where you start changing your pace to speed up and then similarly slow down. Learning how to change pace is not only good for your start, it's also good for later in the race where you maybe drop off some feet and need to get back on them or you see a gap where you can get into some clear water or even when you round those boys. And finally, there's the equipment. If you are really going to struggle to get into the open water, then doing a bit of a dress rehearsal in the swimming pool is going to be invaluable too. So wearing the same goggles you intend to use and also the same wetsuit that you intend to use. And obviously, if the swimming pool's warm, you're not going to be able to wear that wetsuit for the entire session. But even just wearing it for the warm-up is going to be really beneficial. Just getting used to how it feels and obviously the buoyancy and how it might change your body position. That's going to give you a lot of confidence come race day. Ideally, you can actually get into the open water a few times before your race day, but if you can't, fear not. Just run through these drills in your swim training, and before you know it, you'll be quite confident that you can handle anything that race day throws at you in the open water. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up to support the channel, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos about open water swimming, triathlon, and everything that you need to know about your next triathlon race.